Hi guys, Cy from Cyanai Software. Uh, today we're going to talk about our completely rewritten sculpt. Uh, we did our meshing tools and our spline tools. We completely rewrote them from scratch and there's some really big changes in here. So as I talk about this, I'm just going to select up a BIM model here that we brought in. And a typical BIM model in Max, you know, it takes a while to select. There's a lot of objects in it. Um, you know, and, and working with it, you really need to attach this stuff up by materials and be able to work with it in a certain way. So a lot of your attaching and exploding and stuff needs to be really fast. And that's something that we really never had in place, nor did Max. So um, our new attach by material uh, runs very quickly, and this is real time. Uh, we're just going to go through to attach this whole build, BIM model in probably about 32 seconds, something like that. Uh, it is done. Um, 10 seconds. 10 and a, almost 11 seconds. All right, so that is a lot quicker than what we all had out of Max before. And if we would just want to, you know, attach into one object, done. If I want to explode, you know, explode by materials, done. You know, it's it's a quick process. Uh, it's, it's a whole new rewrite. Um, so um, also what we put into here was something called attach by similar. And where this came into play is um, uh, some models, some BIM models get so large that if you were to bring it all in, it would probably take you about 45 minutes to import it in. And then when you go select the whole thing, because there's so many objects, you just crash max. And this is a typical thing that I've seen over and over again. So we put together a little way that you can start picking at your model. So um, if I was just going to say, all right, well, I'm going to select this balcony and I want to attach all the similar objects. It's going to go find all those. Now I can hide that. I can go to the next windows. I can say attach by similar. It's going to find everything in the scene that's similar. I can hide that. Same thing, um, I can go ahead and let me just unhide all. So I can pretty much go through my scene and do all that in a fashion that I can start picking away at it and attach it up till I get to the point where, you know, I feel like I might be able to select the whole model without crashing max, um, which is, and let's just attach this by materials here. Um, which is, like I said, a problem. So um, you want your scene to be nice and light. You want to be able to move around it. You want to be able to make changes. And as you can see, I'm starting to go through, and I'll just attach this last one up by materials uh, and get that out of the way. And once I get all this done, there's probably only about maybe 45 objects in this scene. And now I can move around so much easier. I mean, I can go in, I can pretty much select things, I can deal with things, and now it's getting to the point where, you know, our tools are getting a little more useful because on this big scale stuff, cleaning models is what takes time. Okay, so also what we threw into here is the ability to do a live weld. Uh, because generally when you get stuff, um, the old weld uh, wasn't live, uh, but it also, you couldn't see what was going on. And in Max, you have to sort of get in there and if you want to weld something up, um, it takes quite a while to sort of, um, you know, do object by object by object. You just want to do everything in a bulk. So I'm going to select this whole window. I'm just going to say select um, all the objects that I have. And it's going to go out and it's going to get set up for a live weld. Now, um, there must have been something by, for some reason, I must have had some of that other building selected. <laughs> um, but you can see, um, you know, it's, I can do a live weld in here. It's the same thing as Max's weld. You know, I can just spin this up. I can, you know, get it down to the point. And I always on BIM models, I want to zoom in here and look at the detail on the windows. And if that's not collapsed down, then I know my settings good enough and I can go commit to my weld. So it's going to go. It's done. It's welded all that up. So that's a good plus. Uh, I actually want to see. Yeah, I, I have some of this. Um, let's just explode this by materials. Let me just attach, select some of this up. Okay, so some of this buildings must have been together. Let's jump over to this one. All right, so next thing I'm going to want to do after I do a live weld is I'm going to want to check its geometry. So I can go check for, you know, view for double faces. I mean, sorry, um, uh, flip normals. I can view isolated verts. All that sort of stuff gives me an idea of what's going on. I can also even go in and, you know, 
go view all the textures, you know, view it with textures on it so I can see what's mapped, what's not. But one of the most important is I want to go through here and actually go look for double faces. So I have not found a BIM model at all that doesn't have double faces. It's just something that the way they always come in, they always have double faces. So anything that's red has double faces. Anything that's green doesn't. So I'm going to select my red objects and I'm going to say detach double faces. Now, all these functions now are multi-threaded. So they're quite fast. Um, we are looking to move these towards um, using the GPU as well. So uh, using sort of an open seal architecture. Because uh, right now we're just using standard the G or the CPU for multi-threading, which still makes it really fast for what it used to be. All right, so let's take a look, see what it gave us. All right, so it gave us quite a lot of double faces, which is typical. Every BIM model um, will have this, so I can delete that, get rid of that. And now, you know, I can go in and do some other stuff with the tools. Like, let's take a look at the windows. Okay, what do we got for Windows-wise? Um, Let's just select the glass. I'm going to isolate this. And yeah, I can see all my windows here are great. Okay, but I want to put like a, um, you know, a material on here that gives me um, a variation in a bump. So say I have my glass material, I want to make a sub object with a whole bunch of those. So they all have a different variation in bump. So to get a little more realistic, well, I can do that with this as well. So I can go in and say, all right, well, I have, let's just say I have 15 textures and I want to randomize the ID by element. So I go do that and it's done. I can actually go down here and view by element, view by material ID. It gives me a different color for every material ID. So now you can see I've got a good variation on here. I can randomize this as well. So I can go to a different, you know, random. And then I'm pretty much set, turn this off. And now I've done all my glass. So a lot of the functions in here are really useful. Um, we have also added in our, you know, the basic um, uh, flip normals, unify normals. Uh, it's the same, it, this one is the same as what Max wrote, it's just from the SDK. So we didn't do anything different with this, but we're gonna actually look at writing our own, which will be a lot faster and a little bit more efficient. Uh, but we did it add in here, which is um, flip pivots from normal. And let me just show you that. Let me just pause this. So our um, flip normals from pivot, you do have some situations where you just can't reference anything. Uh, because for unify normals, it's got to have a face that's connected to it. Uh, flip normals, it's just going to opposite, you know, it's just going to flip the normals from one to the other. So you're never going to gain anywhere. So um, we came up with and this uh, normals from pivot. So you can run that and flip every normal away from your pivot or towards. So it sort of gives you... Um, you can move your pivot around to where you want it and sort of flip your normals to that. So it's just an additional function to sort of help out some stuff. Um, we also brought in a um, conform to surface. And uh, our conform to surface, so if you have, um, let's just give you an example here. So let's just get some basic boxes. And I will run these, oops, run these across and make some. And all right, let's just go select up these guys. Oops. And we'll just raise these up. And if I run this, and I'm going to turn off um, uh, conform geometry, and I'm going to say move to surface, it's going to go figure out what's below it. And it's going to go down, glue this down to the geometry. So um, any part of it's, you know, whatever you have selected is going to figure it out. So it looks through everything that's in your scene. So you don't have to sort of select one object. Now, the more you have, um, the more it's going to need to go through and search. Like I have a lot of objects in my scene, so it was probably checking for this, 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 this. So I probably would have just hidden all the other stuff and collected it. But um, we also did add in, um, you can turn on conform geometry, and if I run this down, you can see that it conforms the geometry to the surface, so, um, and not compressing it down. It's not like the max conform. You don't have to select what objects you have, it just does the same thing. It goes to look for all the objects that are underneath it and conforms it. 
Um, next, what else? Oh, um, our um, read topologized plane. Um, now, if you select, you can do multiple objects now. So if I say use that selection set, I can you know spin this down, go read topologize this object here, and it's going to take a look at all the objects. It doesn't care that it's got quite a few and it's going to build a mesh from those multiple objects even though they're overlapping they're all different objects it doesn't care um so um we're sort of trying to go more into the bulk stuff you know not having to attach everything up and then to try and retopologize it um, it's supposed to be just all there now the last part of this um i guess you know we've sort of gone through a lot of the the new features in here um, so a lot of the display features are kind of useful. Um, you know, you can actually see what has texture coordinates on it. Um, you can go see all the edges. Um, you can go view it by verts. You can view it by smoothing groups. Uh, you can select view it by open objects. So any objects that aren't welded or have open things, it'll view it by um, isolated verts. So these guys must have isolated verts. Um, they do. Um, and then double faces and mapping coordinates. So if I go into here and I say, hey, you know what, show me the materials that are on here. These all have a uh, single sub-object material. So if I was to go attach this up and or randomly do, like, okay, let's just take this building because this will have a couple of um, pieces and we'll do our attach, which is nice and fast now. And if we view this by material, you, you'll be give you an idea of you know what's sharing the same materials it just gives you a, a quick view of a, a we just take random colors and put her on a multi sub with a hundred sub objects just gives you an idea of uh, how many material IDs something have or how many materials it has so um, that's about it for the new tools uh, there is a couple of changes down in here you shouldn't need to play with this at all. This is just sort of for testing right now. And this is how many threads that we're using in the math uh, when we do our multi-threading. Um, and also here, the normal hard hardware shader. Now, some machines with Windows 10, um, I will give you an example here. Let's, uh, let's just explode this up by material. And I'm gonna go make my, now, I have this turned off because if I turn on double faces, it's not going to use the hardware hardware shading. And I'll show you what this is, and I'll show you why it's turned off on my machine. Um, some versions of Macs uh, use um, are having a problem with displaying stuff. So if I was to go in here and let's just create a new material, I'm going to say create myself a uh, let's see a double sided material. And that's all great. I'm going to keep the sub-object material. That's fine. Uh, just I'm going to go copy this over as a copy. And I'm going to go apply it to this object here. So we'll just rename this as whatever. And now I'm going to put this into hardware shading mode, which is this one over here. Now, what will happen with this is, yep, there we go. I have just crashed Max. Max will not respond anymore because I have turned this on on a double-sided material. Now, um, if I, I've completely crashed the driver, I've lost my viewports, everything like that. This is a Max issue. It's not an issue in our plugin. So if you do have this issue running double phases, which you shouldn't, it's only on certain machines, and my laptop's the one that we found it was, um, you need to turn this off. Uh, because it'll actually cr try and create you a material and turn on this realistic material and viewport switch, which sometimes will crash Macs in Windows 10. So we're still trying to figure out a solution around that, but that's what that's for. So thanks a lot, guys, and see ya.